Good morning, folks. We've got some incredible articles and events today. Top news, weather outlooks, and how to predict solar cycles. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And from a near-term perspective, we see another run of calm behavior. Lone active region, bright spot with no umbral sunspot cores below it. Southern coronal hole turning through and magnetically connecting to our planet. Its solar wind might impact Earth in two to three days, as we see here the final descent out of the last stream. Middle panel purple plasma speed dropping out as the geomagnetic conditions return to the calmer, quiet range. Let's get right to Dorian. The storm is set to charge up the coastline, and then at some point between Georgia and North Carolina, it's going to catch landfall. That is going to be very rough. Eyes open there. Also near Taiwan, a typhoon is tearing northward, will cross the southernmost Japanese islands before shooting up towards Korea. Last weather note, Moscow's temperature records are some of the oldest continuous records on Earth, and they are smashing their all-time cold records there in micro and macro scale this summer. Let's go to some quick news next. European Space Agency had to fire some thrusters to avoid a SpaceX satellite constellation collision. That would have been very bad. India is shooting to become the fourth nation to land on the moon and the first to aim for the South Pole. Nature article linked below. And China, who is at the moon now, has found a mysterious substance that is either partially melted glass or seriously sounding organic the way they're describing it, eagerly awaiting more info there. Up next, the sun. And we're going to peek in on the 75th Solar Cycle 25 forecast put out in the last few years. Then we're going to show you how to predict these solar cycles and why. First off, the latest prediction. This Ukrainian scientist falls right in the middle of the pack. We have seen the dozens of forecasts that have come out range from a super active cycle to the start of grand minimum. This one seems to fall where most fall, around the same kind of cycle we just had. So folks, here's the simplest way to do these forecasts. Start by knowing that the sun's polar magnetic fields reverse every 11 years, during sunspot maximum. It is during that reversal when the sun's polar magnetic fields are traveling down through lower latitudes that we see the equatorial coronal holes and major sunspot activity crop up. When the fields finally find the opposite pole and settle in, the sunspots disappear until the fields get ready to flip again. So here are the current solar polar magnetic fields and we're covering the last solar cycle and the lead in to the next one. This is the magnetism that will reverse, and as it does so, makes sunspots as it goes to find the other pole. This magnetism must be presented during the upcoming sunspot period. It has nowhere else to go. It appears we're having a similar magnitude cycle to the last one, which is why most forecasters say the next solar cycle will be very similar. We already know the power of the sun's magnetism that will be acting over the next four to six years. It's right there. We're closing with cosmology and starting off light, an attempt to pull magic and find dark matter. They didn't manage that, but they did manage a new constraint on where and how not to look for it. Something they must begin to look for everywhere, however, is recombining plasma. They are looking in the gamma producing sections of a supernova remnant they have discovered, and plasma interactions are being seen for the first time. They've been able to detail them, and this is one of the hard-to-see bits of critical mass and electrodynamic action that was written off in dark matter models simply because we didn't see it. Alas, we keep discovering it, hiding in plain sight day by day. If it's true for plasma, it's triple true for dust. We are especially bad at seeing and understanding it in space. Case in point here. Not only are they now better accounting for the dust hiding in plain sight, but they are still making interesting discoveries. We're discovering that a lot of that dust is olivine, crystal dust, and this is where holding electric charge, riding magnetic fields, obscuring the true nature of light passing through it, all wreck our ability to fully understand the cosmic structure under paradigms which ignore them. Folks, those last two stories on plasma and dust are critically supporting the proposal in plasma cosmology, the first of our three movies released last month. All three of them are linked below the video in the description box, are highly recommended, and website members at suspiciousobservers.org, your latest Deeper Look episode is on the topic too, from a very Saturnian perspective. We greatly appreciate your support. 
We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.